So once you build your basic frequency distribution table, we can now uh, build the basic bar graph here. Uh, and that that's also another topic discussed in section 2.2. .2. So for now, the, the idea of bar graph here is that we're trying to uh, make a visual dis display of the frequency of the basic frequency distribution table that we, we constructed earlier. So now if you notice, now, as long as, long as we're looking at the graph, we always create for ourselves a set of two axes, a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. Now this time on the horizontal axis, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna just lay down all my data values, all my individual data values on the horizontal axis. And and I don't even have to worry about, put, um, say if you put in 60 as the first data value, right? And the next data value is just simply a 64. You don't have to worry about uh, the 63, 62, and 61. They're not on the list, so you don't have, even have to worry. We treat each of these data da data value here, the indiv individual data value as a as a category. So here my next data value is a 68. So I just put down those values that I see on my list. That's all we do. 72, 76, 80, 88. So those are my categories. 96, 104. And 124. Now you can see I'm try I'm I'm doing almost equal space here, but that's that's not even important, okay? And now the vertical axis here is where I'm gonna indicate. So here's I have all my data values. Okay, so those contains the the data values it goes on the horizontal axis. Now my vertical axis now is gonna be the scale for all the the actual frequency frequency and so now what I do here now if I now wisely we would you would need to choose your scale a little how you know however you want to choose your scale but here in this problem now to it would be wiser to look at the, the distribution table and look for the the highest frequency that we have so in my, my highest frequency here is an 8 which is also a perfectly an, an even number so I put high eight is the highest scale that I have. So think about halfway down is a four, and then quarter way down is a two, and quarter way up, I mean about three quarter way down, it's it's a six here. And then you can easily fill in the one, the two, the the one, the three, the five, and the seven if if there is any. So now let's really get into building the the, the bar graph here. The idea now is that for 60, the actual count of 60 is 3. So I am now going to draw a vertical rectangular bar just right on top of 60. A vertical rectangular bar with height 3. So 3 is about here. So I'm going to build my rectangle with height 3. Just like that. So there's my, and that's, I call it a bar. So there's my first bar with height 3 indicating that I have, that's height 3, indicating that my Individu individual value 60 here has frequency 3 and it's also a it's always a good idea to shade it in okay now next data item 64 has frequency 4 so now I'm gonna draw so here's height 4 I'm gonna draw a rec rectangular bar right over 4 right over 64 that has height 4 and it's a good idea again to shade it in and that's how I'm building my bar graph. So for 68, I have a, I have a frequency of 5 for 68. So 5 is about it's midway between 4 and 6. So now right on top of 68, I'm drawing for myself a bar of height 5. A rectangular bar of height 5. And here it is. And then for 72, I have a rectangular bar that goes all the way up to height 8. So height 8 is about here. And I'm not an artist here, so you can't expect me to draw these things as you know nice as they could look, but that's for descriptive purpose here. And so 76 has 6 data values. So now 6. And there's my 
rectangular bar for 76 that represents their 676 and then the 80 there are also 680s and there is my bar for 80. It also has length 6, I mean height 6. And then 88 has 5, so I'm going to look down to this, and once again 88 has height 5. So the bar for 88, right above 88, is height 5. So that's about the same height. Maybe I have cheated a little bit with these little bar here, but they're supposed to be a little taller than that. 6 is a little top. Okay, and here's 5, and 96 has 1. So now it's about halfway. Okay. That's for 96. Okay. And 104 and 124 is all the same height. And that's how we build a, a basic bar graph for individual data values. Okay, now if you're seeing, if you, as you notice, I, I left a, a few gaps here in between the bars. Now the question is, do I have to always leave gap or, you know, when is the case that I don't leave gap? Now when you're constructing a basic bar graph, when you're constructing a basic bar graph, leaving gaps or no gaps, it's all your choice. It doesn't really matter. Later on, if we, if we learn how to build a histogram, then definitely we do not want to leave gaps in between. We want to leave uh, no gaps in between. Okay. And that's how we build a basic bar graph.